introduce the notion of homotopy. So this was a equivalence relation, a certain equivalence relation between maps uh, from a pair, a fixed pair of uh, topological spaces, X and Y. And then we also introduce the notion of uh, homotopy equivalence. in a pair of topological spaces, again, X and Y, and uh, it was a statement that there exists a pair of maps uh, from X and Y and the other way around, so they are what is what I call homotopy inverse to each other. So they're not, they're not inverse, but uh, uh, their composition, uh, they, they both composition, they are homotopy, the composition in this way, is homotopic to identity on X, and the composition the other way around is homotopic to identity at wo at wo on, wo on Y. And uh, it's, uh, uh, it's easy to see that this is a condition weaker uh, than uh, homeo uh, weaker than homeomorphism. Like double line. And uh, uh, then we introduced also a notion of retract. Retract is a certain, uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a subspace A in topological space X, which satisfies a certain condition, namely uh, there exists a map R, which is called retraction, from X to the subspace so that uh, restricted to the subspace A, it, uh, it is identity on A. And then we introduce a special case, uh, there was a special notion of deformation retraction. Uh, in this case, the subspace A is called deformation retract. There is additional condition that there exists a homotopy uh, so if one denotes uh, explicitly this inclusion map by i a the statement there exists a homotopy uh, between identity on x and the composition of r is inclusion. This is an additional condition. And, uh, okay, so, uh, and we did an example. Uh, so there is always, uh, uh, so for any, uh, for any topological space, one can just uh, take a, a subspace of a single point inside, and there's always a retraction, just uh, uh, take a constant map uh, from X to the subspace, so all point, any point here is sent uh, to this point, to this fixed point X zero. And in particular, we showed that uh, if there is exists a deformation retract, if, 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 if this is actually a, a deformation retract, then this, uh, uh, this subspace of a single point is a uh, deformation retract. It's always a retract, but it's a deformation retract. Uh, if it's deformation retract in particular, this will imply that, uh, that X is uh, pass connected. So this already shows that uh, uh, not all retracts are deformation retracts. So as a counter example, just take any topological space which is not pass connected and consider retract uh, just a single point inside. Sorry, I have a question on this point. Yes, Is please. the reverse statement is correct? Is the reverse statement correct to this one? Now not, they... no, no, the inverse statement is, is not correct. If, uh, 
Yeah, if, uh, uh, this is the strongest statement. Uh, so let me, uh, the inverse statement, uh, well, there is no kind of, uh, there is just a definition, uh, which let me mention. So if, uh, uh, if, uh, 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 let me say, like, if, if there exists a, uh, okay, let me write, like, if uh, topological space X uh, deformation retracts to a uh, uh, single point, inside the space, uh, such X is called uh, contractible. So this is a, a much stronger condition than being uh, pass connected. Pass, con uh, pass connected. So there can be, uh, uh, in particular, uh, and uh, so this is actually uh, equivalent. Uh, it's easy to show. Let me don't, don't uh, uh, stop on this. But it's, it's, it's easy to show that this condition is uh, equivalent to the fact that, uh, to the same is that X is a uh, homotopic equivalent just to a single point space. Uh, okay, let me, let me for a moment don't, don't show this, but yeah, just, uh, just uh, there are different definitions of, of space being contractible, but uh, yeah, let me take this. So in particular, as we will show that, uh, we'll actually prove, for example, that uh, uh, S1, is, uh, uh, is so one, for example, as an example, one can see the topological space being S1, and uh, uh, which this is, uh, of course, pass connected, but not, con but it's not contractible. So there is no, it doesn't exist a deformation of attack at a point. And this we will, uh, we will, we will rigorously show it. Uh, 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 a bit later, actually, well, this would be just a corollary of more, of more strong say, but in basically you can, you can uh, kind of already, at least naively, you can visualize there is no way to continuously uh, contract all, po all points of a circle here, because if you try to do this, there is somewhere will be in discontinuity of this, of, of your map, which uh, contracts everything to a point, so it's not possible to do this, but uh, we will show it uh, more regularly a bit later. Any other questions about uh, last lecture? Okay, so uh, as I promised last time, uh, yeah, let me show a couple of other uh, examples, kind of explicit simple examples of, uh, of uh, deformation retract. So consider, for example, X uh, to be a, a two-dimensional disk. This is a convinced a subspace of two-dimensional Euclidean space uh, as just defined as a, a subspace of all points or vectors, if you wish, with the norm. If I understand this is a vector space, a subspace of all uh, vectors with, uh, with norm uh, less than one, right? open disk and uh, consider just uh, x0, again just consider a, a sim uh, single point x0 inside this disk, d2, and uh, in this case uh, there this is a deformation retract. And uh, 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 so why is this? So the, uh, for retract, uh, just, okay, the retract itself is, it will be a constant map. It's just a maps ever, uh, the whole space. So, uh, well, it's a disk. Uh, any point here it maps uh, to this X zero. And uh, so to show that this is, uh, this subspace is actually deformation attack, so we need to uh, uh, give a homotopy, a 
explicit uh, right, uh, give, give explicit homotopy between uh, identity map on the disk and uh, uh, this composition of uh, inclusion and uh, retract is my uh, space A here. So this is just a map uh, which, okay, will denote, denote by this R prime. Again, this is essentially the same map as R itself. It's just, uh, it's a map from disk to itself such that all, any point X is sent to X zero. Okay, so we need to find a homotopy between this map and identity map on disk, and uh, so let me know by this, F, by this explaining map to F, so F is a map from a disk times interval to the disk, and uh, let me uh, take uh, some point X here times T, a parameter in the disk, in the interval, and uh, I will send it to, uh, so I take this pair, X and T, and I will send it to the following. Uh, so I send it to, again, essentially I'm using more or less this, the same uh, construction as, as, as we did for uh, Euclidean's, as we did a bit earlier. Uh, so I take this T, uh, let me take the following. So I take uh, one minus uh, T uh, times X, plus uh, t times x0. Again, I understand this uh, uh, disk as a subspace in R2, which, uh, uh, which I can send as vector space, I can multiply and add, multiply uh, the vectors by real numbers and add them up. So you can see that uh, when t equals zero, uh, t equals zero, uh, Everything vanishes here, and this is one. So this when t equals zero, this is an entity map, uh, and uh, when uh, uh, t equals one, this vanishes, and this just becomes a constant map uh, to x zero. So let me write this explicitly: f uh, restricted uh, to identity. Uh, what I mean, t is restricted to identity is uh, identity on. Uh, sorry, t is is uh, not uh, not is this uh, our map R prime, and when f is restricted to zero, this is the identity disk. So how do we visualize uh, this? Uh, so let me be careful, kind of very explicit here. Uh, so if I take uh, some point, I can take some arbitrary point x here and consider. Uh, f of x and t, which is just written here. And uh, if I change, I, and I start changing uh, t from uh, uh, zero to one. So at zero, and, at, at, and see where is the value of this uh, function. So at, at, uh, at t equals zero, I'm here, and, but when t uh, approaches one, I approach uh, this point, fixed point x zero in a linear way. So kind of all points, so in a sense, these deformation retract as uh, uh, kind of uh, as follows, so that uh, all points on the disk when I uh, move kind of my, if I send t as some sort of time, uh, all points on the disk, they move fixed point x0. So everything, so at the end when t equals one, everything just collapses to the single point x0. This can be, this is kind of uh, these lines which I draw kind of, so, you know, trajectories of uh, and this is of course example of uh, contractible uh, space. 
So this is a very simple example, but uh, are there any questions about it? Yeah, let me consider a slightly a more complicated example. So consider uh, X uh, to be uh, now an analogous. Uh, two-dimensional Euclidean space. Now it will be, a, again, this will be subspace in R2 defined by the inequality. So the, the norm is uh, greater than one-half and less than three-half. So it means that this is, uh, we consider an analogous with, uh, uh, this is radius, uh, one half and the exterior radius is three halves. We consider interior here and uh, for my space A inside this X, I will take uh, just a unit circle. A in red here. And again, the statement, this is a, uh, they say is a deformation retract. So the retraction R uh, here, again, it will be mapped from X to A. Uh, so that, uh, uh, let me take a point X some arbitrary point X in an analysis, and let me send it to uh, X uh, divided by the norm of X. So once, uh, so this is definitely uh, an element for unit circle, because this has uh, norm one by construction. And, uh, uh, and now I, we want to uh, construct the homotopy between uh, this map uh, composed with the uh, composed with the inclusion map into X and the identity. So we map from X times interval to X and. Uh, Again, let's take some pair X and T, and uh, I will define this map as follows. So again, we want uh, something when uh, similar thing. We want something when T equals one, uh, T equals zero. We want identity, and when T equals one, we want uh, the value of this retract. And this is easily uh, achieved uh, as follows. So we take again one minus T times x, just take a linear combination of identity, of the result of identity and the result of this map. T, x. Again, this is uh, in a similar way, this can be visualized. So if I, if I, if I consider the, uh, start with some point x here, and I consider how f and x and t changes, uh, it goes like this as, so it uh, approaches uh, this, uh, the unit circle in a, li in, a, in a linear way. So the retract itself, so this is the value of f, uh, f and x and t when t equals one. The retract just, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, Kind of renormalizes uh, your vector so that becomes uh, if now it has a unit value, unit absolute value. So all points uh, they move like this. Kind of uh, collapse. Uh, yeah, you, you essentially collapse analysts, uh, your analysts to this circle. 
inside inside the nose. Any questions about this example? Okay, why is this uh, kind of uh, notion of deformation retraction and retract are important? Uh, so they will appear often in our course, and in particular, so the importance already can be seen from the following uh, statement. So let me formulate this, the following proposition. If uh, A subspace of in X is a deformation retract, then A is homotopic, the uh, topological space A, A, space A is homotopic equivalent to X. And the proof is uh, relatively simple and uh, more or less follows from the definition of the differential retract. Uh, so, uh, so we want to prove uh, the homotopy equivalence. So we need to preserve. Uh, uh, okay. So we need to essentially find uh, a map, uh, a pair of maps, so they are homotopy inverse to each other. And uh, for one of these map is, uh, and we, what we actually want to show is that okay, we already have a pair of uh, a natural pair of maps defined for a track. One is uh, inclusion and the other is uh, retraction. And uh, they actually do provide a pair of uh, homotopy inverse uh, maps. So how do we show this? Uh, so from the definition of the retract, uh, of the deformation retract, we know that there exists a homotopy Uh, between identity on X and uh, the composition uh, between R and inclusion. This is a from definition of deformation retract. And uh, so one way, uh, so we show that this composition uh, is homotopic to identity. Now we want to show that this composition is also homotopic to identity. Uh, but this is just uh, uh, follows. So we know that uh, R is a retraction uh, and uh, a property of the retraction is that the restriction of retraction to uh, the subspace is identity on A. There was this uh, property in the definition of the retraction, any retraction, not necessarily a, a deformation. But what this uh, means, this is equivalent to, to, to the statement that uh, just uh, uh, tautologically that if one composes, uh, if one composes uh, R with inclusion, when we first applies inclusion, then R, this, is, this composition of maps is identity on A. Here we just have equality. And of course the identity is uh, homotopically equivalent. So indeed we have that the composition in this way is, is homotopic to identity. This is uh, follow some definition of uh, a deformation retract. And the composition the other way around is just equal to identity on A. So indeed uh, uh, and this, is, this follows just from definition of a general retraction. So this indeed uh, shows that these uh, two maps are homotopy inverse to each other, and by definition, then A and X are homotopy equivalent spaces. And uh, so this provides a kind of nice tool for kind of constructing homotopy equivalent spaces or showing uh, that the two a pair of spaces are homotopy equivalent to each other. In particular, 
uh, sometimes, uh, like if you have a pair of uh, topological spaces and you need to kind of find an argument show that they are uh, homotopy equivalent to each other, it might be difficult to do this directly by definition, but uh, uh, one can use kind of the following uh, obvious uh, corollary, uh, which follows from this statement, that uh, if, uh, uh, if you have a pair of sp uh, some sort of A and B uh, pair of sp subspaces in X, which are both, are both uh, they may be different, uh, there is no uh, kind of, uh, uh, no, no in principle, no relation between these two subspaces, but if you know that they are both uh, deformation retracts, Uh, this follows that, uh, uh, I mean, this fo so this follows that A is homotopy equivalent to X and B is homotopy equivalent to X, but then we uh, use the fact that uh, we showed the last uh, lecture that the, uh, this, hom this equi homotopy equivalence is equivalence relation, so there is particular transitivity property. So this follows uh, that, uh, it follows that the uh, homotopy equivalent is the sum. Actually, the inverse, also, we are not going to use this, but the inverse actually is also true. If, if a pair of topological spaces are homotopy equivalent to each other, they necessarily, they actually exist, always exist a larger space where they can be embedded so that this larger space uh, deformation retracts uh, to, uh, to both of them. Any questions about deformation retract? Uh, hello. Yes. Are there any any uh, retracts that are not differential uh, deformation retracts, and at the same time uh, the space is connected? Uh, yes. Uh, for example, this uh, circle. Is pass connect? There is a you can still retract it to a point. Consider a single point in circle. So this is still a, a retract. The retraction just a constant map. You send all points, uh, all points to uh, this fixed point. So okay. there, there is still, it's still a retract, but it's an, in this case this is not a deformation retract. Okay. There is no continuous. There is no homotopy from this constant map and identity map on the circle. Thank you. Okay. And in particular, well, uh, this kind of uh, can be shown, and we actually will show essentially. Uh, I mean, one of the corollaries of uh, our of some statement we should have before that uh, that uh, the circle uh, is not homotopic equivalent to a point, for example. So this is a different uh, have different homotopy equivalence. You can understand the kind of homotopy equivalence is a. Uh, Again, it's, it's a much weaker, much weaker kind of uh, equivalence relation as homomorphism, but you can understand as some sort of you, 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 know, you cannot just like homomorphism. You understand as some sort of you can, can like deform your sp shape or something like this, but homotopy you can also kind of uh, contract, uh, do some sort of contraction and uh, kind of inverse of contraction, some sort of expansions. But if you have some sort of a hole in a space. Uh, this is uh, uh, this kind of homotopy is, is a kind of um, is sensitive to a certain kind of holes in the space. Which you can you cannot kind of just if you have some non-trivial hole you cannot just collapse it. Well, this is just some uh, kind of <laughs> intuitive part. Yeah, so one way kind of as we show is that we will calculate the, uh, we'll define a notion of fundamental group, for example, and uh, yeah, the fundamental group of a point would be trivial, but fundamental group of uh, S1 will be uh, a group of integers, and here this will be trivial. And since uh, we also show that the fundamental group is a, in, is a homotopy invariant, so it's for homotopy equivalent spaces, the fundamental group is, is essential is necessarily the same. If, this, if these groups are different for a pair of topological spaces, they are not, they're necessarily not homotopy equivalent. This is a, uh, what we'll do in the future. So this is not 
these two groups are not isomorphic, from which it follows that the, the corresponding spaces are not homotopy equivalent. Okay, and but uh, okay. Before we define, and uh, before we define this pi one, the fundamental group, we will need some uh, do some additional work. Particularly, we'll introduce some uh, useful definitions. So you probably already encountered it in your course of uh, topology last year, uh, what, what a pass, but uh, let me complete this, uh, remind you what is the definition. So a pass in a topological space X uh, is a map. In by map, in our course, we mean continuous function. From an uh, interval to x. And uh, so f0 is a pair of uh, values at the ends of the interval are uh, usually called endpoints. Pass and uh, well, sometimes it's useful to distinguish. So this can be also the initial point, and this is the terminal point. Again, you why this is kind of a reasonable definition of a pass. So if you have some topological space X, uh, so if you consider a continuous map from interval to X, the image of this. Uh, uh, of this map some, looks something like this, so the image of the interval, and uh, it should be continuous. This is a value of zero, and this is a value of one. So this looks like a pass where I go from, when I change, once I change the, the kind of S parameter here, I go from this point to this point. Okay. And now we need, want to define a uh, kind of operation on pass. Operations. So first operation which you want to define is uh, what is called inverse. We take a pass. Uh, uh, so we have a, a, we start with a pass map uh, from interval to X. And uh, then we define it inverse. This will be another pass which will denote by F bar. This will be another map from interval to x uh, such that, uh, uh, well, one can just define it by explicit formula that uh, f bar, so again, if I denote uh, s variable in this interval, uh, then the value uh, the, uh, is defined by the condition that the value of this f bar of s is, is equal to the value of f at 1 minus s. Why is it uh, as a meaning inverse? Is because, uh, well, if you look at this picture, essentially this kind of inverse is, uh, uh, so first of all, it inverses the end point, the initial point and the terminal point, right? And uh, if, now if I change S from zero to one, I will just go, I will follow the same, the same points, but I will go in the opposite direction. F bar.
another natural iteration, which you will need to define is a composition of paths. So now let us start with a pair of given paths in X. And we, we define a composition which will denote by uh, this dot. A solid, solid dot, so this this, uh, this will be a, a new pass from an interval to x, which will again define just by by formula. So this uh, the new pass uh, uh, the value of this map at s is given will be given by the uh, piecewise uh, defined function. So when s is uh, from zero to one half, uh, let's say including, and then uh, I will define it as a G of two uh, S, and uh, when S is uh, from one half uh, to one, uh, we will define it as uh, F of uh, to S minus one. Minus one, thank you. Uh, but of course, this is not always, uh, uh, we need some condition actually that this is a continuous map and this condition is that uh, we need that the, uh, uh, the start point of, the, the initial point of pass F coincide with, uh, uh, with the terminal point of pass G. So because, uh, so we need that the, this function is continuous at s equals one half. So the, this value uh, is g of one, and this is uh, f of uh, zero. So the coincide, so this should be a condition, otherwise this is just not defined operation. And again, why this is a reasonable definition of, uh, uh, of what one can call a composition is that, uh, okay, as we have a pair of paths, have a pass and pass F in our space X, and uh, so that its end point coincides, uh, is, is, is terminal point coincides with the initial point of some other pass G, which looks something like this, and, uh, uh, and then by composition, we, we mean the pass which uh, uh, will follow uh, first, the pass F when I go from uh, zero to one half and then it will fall past G when S changes from one half to one. This uh, will be a new pass of just the same F. Uh, sorry, that, uh, uh, sorry, uh, yeah. I often uh, confuse this. Uh, should be a, uh, G, well, this is, a, uh, this was F, so this was, sorry, this was G and this was F. First, it's G and then F. So we read, as in composition function, we read uh, from, kind of from right to left. So this is a composition F. Okay. Uh, good, and uh, is the next step towards the definition of uh, fundamental group is uh, uh, kind of the idea. I mean, morally, kind of fundamental group. You want we want to def consider kind of a space of uh, certain paths in in the space X, but uh, I mean there are too many, uh, of course, too many paths. We want somehow to make it more manageable. So again, we want to consider some equivalence relation. And uh, since you want to consider homotopy between paths, but we want to consider uh, some sp special type of uh, homotopy, which is called the path homotopy. So let me reduce the definition of uh, path homotopy. Uh, so this is a, a will be a 
relation between a pair of paths f and g in x uh, such that uh, I always uh, kind of uh, I, I require that their endpoints coincide. So the question if uh, two pa is uh, uh, about pass homotopy only uh, stands when the uh, when the points and points are the same. So it looks some, something like this. This is pass F and this is F G. Uh, so the pass homotopy is a map. from an interval times an interval uh, to x. So in a sense, this is a, defi it's a similar definition of, uh, of the usual homotopy so far, uh, which, uh, again, it's uh, uh, by default, I mean, this map is a continuous function, and uh, it satisfies uh, the following conditions that uh, uh, yeah, I will denote uh, this is uh, S and this is T. So this S is kind of is, a, is a, the same essentially as the meaning of this uh, uh, parameter which describes your pass and T uh, is a homotopy parameter. So is that F of uh, uh, zero T is the same as uh, f of zero, which is, uh, of course, the same as uh, g of zero by, uh, by our kind of by our assumption. And this is, should be true for any t. And similarly, for f one t, it should be equal to f of one, which is the same as g of one, also for any t. And the other condition is that uh, uh, so this is if I fix t the other way around, if I fix t to be zero, f of s zero should reproduce my uh, pass f, and if I fix t, uh, sorry, if I fix t to one, this should reproduce my pass g. So without this condition, this would be the same as uh, just a homotopy, the usual homotopy between the pair of functions, right? So at zero, it restricts to one function, and at one, it restricts to the other function. But here, I also make additional conditions that uh, if, I, uh, for any, if I make a restriction here to zero, for all values of uh, homotopy parameter, this will be uh, the same as uh, initial value of f and g, and the same for s equals one. So how can one understand this? Uh, so let me draw the following picture. So again, so essentially we have a map. Uh, so we have some topological space X. So we map, so F uh, defines a map uh, from a square. Uh, to this uh, uh, topological space X. So let me denote here, so what is a better choice? Okay, here, uh, let me, uh, so this axis will denote the homotopy parameter T, and this is S, this is a parameter uh, of my uh, pass. And, uh, yeah, so let me draw something. And uh, so what do you require, what this, what, how this geometrically this condition which I wrote uh, looks like. So what happens is that, uh, so if I, uh, let's say, so if, if I fix S to be, uh, okay, let me write, uh, no, let me f fix S to be, uh, sorry, T, T, uh, let me fix T to be zero and I change, uh, consider just this interval. So this interval for t equals zero is just, ma is just uh, the restriction of big F is just this pass F here. 
this interval just maps uh, to the image of f. And the restriction of big, big F on this uh, side, when uh, t equals one, it just becomes the map defining uh, my path G right here. But for all th this point, this interval, so this is when I restrict uh, S to be zero, so this the whole interval here is just mapped uh, to this initial point of both paths. So it stays the same. And we don't change uh, initial point between paths. And th this side maps, the whole this side is just maps to this uh, the terminal point. And in between, so the, and the, and the whole uh, uh, square mapped something like this. The image looks something like this. And in between, so this homotopy, uh, so once we change the homotopy parameter, we kind of uh, can understand that we deform again one path to each other so that it uh, continuously uh, changes uh, from one path to another. But we fix the main difference between the usual homotopy is just we always fix this, uh, keep fixed the endpoints. And, uh, but in many, uh, in many aspects, this is a notion very similar to the usual homotopy. In particular, uh, there is the following statement uh, that the path homotopy is an equivalence relation on the space of paths. Okay, on the, on the set, uh, on the set of uh, all paths. Metapological space X, so this is uh, using the notation which you had before, this is a uh, Uh, so this is uh, just a continuous function from interval to x uh, this uh, of course the, the, the pass the pair of paths can be equivalent only by function only if they have the same uh, endpoints otherwise uh, there is no sense of, uh, I mean they're not uh, automatically not equivalent and uh, well I'm not going to so prove uh, this is uh, similar uh, to the case of uh, ordinary homotopy, which we did. So we did already prove that the, the, the usual homotopy without this restriction is an equivalent relation on the space of maps, and the proof is uh, very similar. So I leave it as exercise. Okay, so now, uh, now we want to, uh, uh, so we define this equivalence relation between paths, and now we want to kind of show what is the, uh, how these operations, which we defined, uh, just defined, how they uh, behave under this uh, path homotopy. Because these operations uh, uh, will essentially, we will need these operations to define a group structure on the, on the kind of on the space of paths. Uh, and, uh, but we also want to quotient uh, this space of uh, pass respect to homotopy. Okay. So we'll show the following proposition. Plus homotopy uh, 
uh, has the following property. So there will be uh, a few properties. So let me list it here. So if uh, f, if plus f is homotopic to f prime, uh, so everything, every function I write here are, are pass, then it follows that the, the inverses are also homotopic to each other. And uh, then if uh, the second property B, if uh, F is homotopic to F prime and uh, plus G is homotopic to G prime, then it follows the, the respective compositions are also pass homotopic. Of course, assuming the composition can be defined. So they, uh, they agree at end points. The property C is that uh, uh, this, uh, which is actually very important for us uh, later, will be later, is that this, uh, so when you consider uh, Composition of pass of three pass, but then the, the, we have to define in order which we do composition. We first, first compose uh, G and F, and then compose with H, and we also can compose G and uh, first compose G and H, and then compose it with F. And as a pass, they in principle they are different pass in general. But what is true is that they are, uh, these compositions are in different order, uh, they are homotopic to each other. And this will uh, kind of, uh, this will be important uh, later, we'll define group structures of this. There is no kind of associativity on the space of pass uh, on this operation of pa on this composition of pass, but once we do this quotient with respect to homotopy, there, there will be associative, so it'd be nice. And uh, finally, the uh, D property D is that we, if we start with the pass and we compose it with the uh, inverse pass bar, uh, this is homotopic to, uh, let me denote it by C, uh, x0. So this is, a, uh, this is just, a, by definition, this is a constant pass, what is called a constant uh, pass at x0. Here, x0 uh, is uh, the same as initial initial point of pass f. So this means uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a map from an interval to x, this is uh, just for any s, it sends uh, to x0. So it's just a constant for the fixed point x0. So it's a pass which kind of stays at a single point x0. It doesn't move. So now we'll have to prove this. So first uh, property A, uh, quite easy. So, uh, so we assume that F, this uh, pair of pass is homotopic using some homotopy F. And uh, uh, then we want to show that, uh, that the inverse is also homotopic, uh, suppose with some homotopy, explicit homotopy F bar, which we denote by F bar. So what we're gonna do 
if a, if a given homotopy here, we'll just construct explicitly the homotopy F bar here. And uh, we'll just take uh, F bar be same as F, so explicitly as a, as a, uh, as a, as a value of pair S and T. So again, S and T, so again, F, the, homot the past homotopy is the uh, uh, functions from a pair of interval uh, to X, so both F and F bar. And uh, so given F, we define F bar of S and T as F of uh, one minus S and T. And we'll need to check that this uh, indeed satisfies uh, the conditions. So of course, it's a continuous, again, uh, this is uh, obviously a continuous function uh, on the square to, to x, and it satisfies the all necessary conditions. So we have to, uh, there are conditions when uh, either of these arguments is zero, one. There are four conditions, essentially. Uh, so first condition is that uh, uh, if I take f bar of s and zero, so if I use this, this is equal to uh, f of uh, uh, one minus s zero, and this is equal to, uh, we know that this is, uh, uh, the, if I restrict t here, the f becomes uh, small f, right? f is a homotopy from f to f prime, and this is indeed f bar of s. So indeed, when uh, my t homotopy parameter is zero, I get f bar. And similarly, if, I, uh, if my uh, parameter t here homotopy uh, is one, this is uh, the same as f of one minus s one, which you'll know that this is f prime of one minus s, which is the same by definition as f bar, f prime bar of s, okay? Uh, now we want to check the condition at uh, when s is zero and t is arbitrary. Uh, so uh, we just plug in, plug it here. This is f of uh, one t, and this is uh, we know that this should be uh, equal to uh, for any t. This should be equal to the endpoint endpoints to the terminal point of both of these, of either of these maps, so this is the same as uh, f, in particular, the same as f of one for any t, but we know that the uh, terminal point of f is the initial point of f bar inverse. And this is indeed what we want. Uh, so when we plug uh, s to be zero, we do get uh, f bar zero, and uh, similarly, when s is equal to one and t is arbitrary, we get uh, f of uh, uh, zero t, which is f of zero, and this is the same as f of bar of one. This uh, f bar, chosen to be like this, satisfies all of the, all the needed uh, condition for the path homotopy between f bar and f prime bar assuming that f is a path homotopy between f and f prime. Any questions here? Okay, then uh, let me show the second part, b. Yeah, so, so now so assume there is a homotopy f between f and f prime, and also a given homotopy g, capital G, from g and g prime. And uh, we need to show, we need to check if it follows that f is uh, the composition of, uh, let me, uh, G and F is homotopic to a uh, function of F prime. Suppose 
So we want to find some explicit, uh, we will show that if we find some explicit homotopy H here. And uh, again, we just can explicitly define the required homotopy by uh, using the uh, homotopies capital F and capital G. And let me define it this when, again, when S. So this, since this uh, kind of the composition of uh, pass was defined by a uh, twice-wise uh, defined function. Uh, so we split the interval uh, into two halves, one half in from uh, zero to one half. And in this part, we use essentially homotopy uh, between uh, G and G prime. And in this part, uh, in the second half of the interval, we use the homotopy, use the homotopy uh, uh, between F and F prime. So again, uh, how can this be visualized uh, to make it more clear? Uh, so let me uh, I use the T yeah, let me do this yeah I can do this uh, doesn't matter okay let me uh, kind of I'm using uh, the same uh, kind of uh, uh, similar picture as I had here So what we do here is that, uh, so we need to define, a, uh, so homotopy gives, defines a function on a, on a square essentially. Uh, and uh, so what I want to say is that these, uh, what this formula uh, dramatically means that this, uh, the function h on the square is, uh, uh, is just given by uh, taking, so we have a, functions f and g, they both can be so the function from a square to a topological space x. And what we do to, to, uh, to construct the function h is just by uh, putting the values of big G here on this half of the square and the, and the values of uh, f, capital F, sorry, uh, the other way around, sorry. Split uh, this interval for s in halves, this square one half. Here we put uh, uh, G, and here we put F, very scary. And uh, so how, and this is, uh, so we have a H maps from this, the whole square to logical space X. And uh, so the image uh, looks as follows, so all these, uh, uh, so first of all, let me, so this is, uh, so G uh, was the, uh, so this, uh, this interval, the whole interval, so G was the homotopy between uh, G and G prime. was a G of zero, and this was one. And so all these, uh, the uh, green interval, they both, uh, they just map uh, to endpoints. And this is uh, G, and this is uh, the restriction to this is G prime. And uh, sorry. And between, so this, this square maps to this square. And then I can compose, so the, since I can compose uh, F with G, uh, 
So the, uh, the initial point of F should coincide with the terminal point of G, so this is the same as F of zero. And so here we have a pair of uh, homotopic uh, paths F and F prime. And uh, particle this is F, F here, F prime, not here. This uh, full interval is just mapped to a single point. This kind of uh, half of the square maps to here. So the whole square is mapped to this. And uh, essentially what we are saying is that, uh, so the, the, homo the homotopy parameter we change like this. So this is, a, if you change kind of uh, somewhere in the middle uh, for some fixed value of t, it takes some uh, uh, restriction to this. So it gives us some pass in between, and if I, yeah, so, so this composition of homotopies, so if you have, homo, uh, yeah, this H essentially, I deform G to G prime here and F to prime, and uh, so the composition deforms the composition. Okay. Here, yeah, I'm being quite detailed, so I hope this is uh, clear, but if not, uh, let me know. Because uh, 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 later I, I'm not uh, later I'm not going to be as detailed as here. Okay, so this is uh, uh, was property B, uh, and now you can see the property C. If you, uh, those maps three, it's a triple of uh, paths like this. This is a composition of homotopic to a, a composition of of, this, of the same triple of paths, but in a different order. And uh, again, uh, the answer. Uh, so, the, uh, so we need to check this, and again we will. Show this by uh, giving explicit uh, homotopy. Uh, so okay, let me let me first write a kind of geometric geometric idea. So again, to construct this homotopy, we essentially need to construct a map from a, a kind of a square to X, which satisfies uh, particular conditions uh, at the boundaries. Here it will be map K. X. And here is somehow of the composition of plus H. And then And uh, so first, uh, so if we start here, so here we first do, uh, so the, uh, as we define, but the composition of paths is defined by just essentially kind of uh, splitting your uh, interval in half and uh, rescaling both functions and uh, uh, combining them together. So in particular, if you do this composition in this order, this means that, uh, uh, so this, uh, so this path we should get uh, uh, when we restrict to this edge. And uh, so this combination of this order means that we first uh, kind of, uh, uh, if we compose this, so we split into uh, one half here, but then uh, when we compose F and G here, we split this into, uh, uh, once again, into two halves, into equal halves, so this would be a, a three-fourths point, right? So here, uh, so the, the path which is a combination is just given by uh, combining the rescaled path here so here we have H, uh, G, and F with, uh, with correspondingly rescaled arguments. So they uh, combine like this. But if you uh, look at the right side here, which uh, should be given by restriction of our homotopy here, uh, this should be the other way around. So here, 
split uh, in one half here, and then we split the, uh, the first half in another. Another uh, two pieces, and this will be uh, this restriction here to this interval is h, this restriction to this interval is g, and the restriction to this bigger interval is f. And uh, uh, so we need to find essential homotopy which uh, changes uh, this to this, and this can be do, do by doing by just uh, by just rescaling. Once I change my t, I, I kind of rescale everything. So it, uh, at the end, at the beginning, I have here, and the end is here, and I can do this in a linear way to uh, kind of expand this, scale this interval so it becomes this, and rescale this interval so it becomes this, and this I just kind of, uh, this interval I move. And uh, so here, at, at, at any restriction, at any fixed t, this is uh, still given by just, uh, the, the, the restriction to these three intervals is just given by of my k is just given by f, g, and h uh, correspondingly rescaled and shifted. Uh, but of course, if you want, then this can be all everything written analytically. So what, is, what this actually means, so in particular this g of h of s, if I want to explicitly uh, determine this uh, uh, write down the, 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 the function on the interval which determines this composition. This is given by the following. Vice-wise uh, function. So this is when uh, s is from zero to one half. Uh, then it's uh, some rescaling of g when s from one half to three fourths, and uh, and then there's some rescaling of f when s is from three fourths uh, to one. Okay. So this is explicitly. Uh, uh, tell uh, explicit formula which uh, corresponds to just geome this geometric picture at this edge. And then uh, the composition uh, the other way around is given uh, by the following function. It's just a similar. Is just explicitly written down this function, piecewise given function at this edge. Otherwise, either bracket is closed uh, or square or parenthesis, it, it's uh, not important because the functions coincide here. Okay, and uh, and then this, uh, the homotopy, the explicit function for the homotopy, which uh, realizes this uh, kind of rescaling, is explicitly given as follows. H. So this is just an analytic expression of what uh, I mentioned to you. Uh, but I explained geometrically, so uh, if you want, you can explicitly check and just It, uh, this is indeed a continuous function on the square which realizes uh, the required homotopy.
Any questions about uh, this point C? This is kind of all uh, preliminary kind of, uh, kind of dirty work which we have to do uh, before <laughs> defining uh, the fundamental group. But once we kind of prove all these uh, uh, kind of statements, properties, uh, everything will be kind of nice and natural. Okay, so finally we need to uh, show the property D is that uh, uh, the composition of pass and its inverse is homotopic to what we denote a constant pass which stays at zero. So, so the picture looks something like this. So we have a pass F uh, with initial point X zero, somewhere here SF of one, and then we have a pass F bar Opposite. Okay, so we need to show that this is a homotopic to a pass which just uh, stays uh, at this point. And uh, so we need to, well, this is, dramatically this means that we can deform, so the combination of pass, we go first here and then we go there. And we, the same is that we can always deform this uh, composition to the constant pass by just kind of uh, changing the pass, uh, this endpoint, contracting into here, so it finally just stays here. So this is what happens geometrically, and uh, 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 again, so analytically, uh, so if you want to, again, explicitly define this uh, pass by function on the interval, so this is by definition of the composition and the inverse pass is given by the following, so again, we split Defining composition is split into uh, two halves. So this is two, uh, f bar of two uh, s minus one, but uh, using the definition of f bar, this is the same as f of uh, two of minus one minus s. And this is a, a value when s is from one half uh, to one on the second half of the interval. And uh, uh, again, to uh, kind of geometrically, if you want to define this homotopy big F, uh, map uh, from a square. Uh, so in the beginning, we have uh, position of F and F bar. At the end, everything just have to map uh, to a single point. X zero, so at the end we should have just a constant pass. And uh, we also know that, uh, well, we also know that uh, uh, this is uh, the initial point so this side and this side, they should map. So this is a path starting uh, at x zero at ending at, at x zero. So both this, uh, uh, the top and bottom edge, they also all just map to stay map to x zero. And then we need to kind of okay. Then we need to extend this map to the whole uh, to the whole square. And how can we do this? is just by uh, saying, uh, what, what I'm gonna do is, is uh, essentially map, for example, map the whole triangle here uh, to x zero, and uh, uh, here, if you, if you take some particular uh, kind of uh, uh, slice for fixed t, uh, this will be a, just a restriction of, this will be a restriction of f Going to some up to up to some uh, uh, up to some uh, kind of intermediate uh, intermediate point here, right? This is uh, uh, 
how we change this point. So explicitly, we can take it, uh, and once we move, once we move uh, it, uh, so we start, uh, this, the image of this point starts us here, but then we move it uh, to X zero. And ex again, explicitly, uh, this uh, big F, uh, can be given by the following expression. Map on this square, which satisfies this condition, is uh, uh, given by the following pi-wise expression. So we split here into kind of three pieces. Uh, here, on the first piece, it only goes to up to uh, up to this point. So this is f of uh, two s, and. Uh, Uh, f of uh, sorry, this should uh, yeah, this should depend on t. Sorry, f of uh, one minus t. So when t equals uh, so if this is the, the value of this point will be f of one minus t. So when t equals zero, I get uh, f of one. So this is the same as endpoint. And when t equals uh, the, the terminal point, and when t equals one, this is the same as f zero, which we want. And uh, and this is the same. So the whole this the whole interval is mapped to f of one minus t. So this is the value of this function on the uh, on this interval, and this is the value of the function on this interval when s is uh, uh, from uh, one half one plus t one, and then we have a, a constant value on this interval, one minus t. S is uh, between uh, these two values. And this finally concludes this, uh, so the fourth and last property, and this concludes the proof of the proposition. Questions? Hello? Is that a question? Hello? Yes? Uh, can you describe again the diagram? For for the last uh, part, for the D part? Yes. Okay. So my uh, so T in this direction, uh, the T is a, is a kind of is a homotopy parameter. How I change how I deform my path. So at the start, I have a composition of two paths F. And then f bar. So this is uh, this composition is given by. Uh, so this pass is uh, uh, I split this pass into two halves. Here I use the function f, and here I use the function f bar, which is just uh, the same as f, but uh, the argument is changed to one minus argument. And uh, so what I do now I start. So this is what happens on this edge. Now I start uh, changing my homotopy parameter. So I start deforming my pass. So what I do, uh, this, uh, uh, now I, I replace, so this, uh, the, the value on this interval, so I, I kind of fix this triangle, which connects uh, these points, these three points in, this, uh, in, the, in the middle of this interval here. And uh, uh, so the, now I want to describe the path which uh, uh, obtained by, uh, for, for this value of t. So here, once I, before reaching this triangle, I just follow uh, the same as pass of uh, pass given by f, but I stop at f, my, f one minus t. So I only move uh, 
instead of going the full f, I only move to f of one, one minus t. Once, uh, so in particular, when initially when t is equal to zero, I move to the to the whole to the, to the full n. And then for some uh, for when when my s belongs to this interval inside the triangle, I don't do anything. I just stay uh, stay at this point. So this is a constant map. This is correspond to this. The whole interval is mapped to this to the same point f1. Uh, sorry, what? I did something wrong, right? Okay, the, uh, sorry, what was, uh, uh, okay, the one, uh, well, what I, what I uh, okay, one thing, okay, what I said just now, it was correct, what, it's not true that the whole interval so yeah, it's not true that the whole triangle maps to uh, to X zero. What is true is that uh, yeah, this is not true. So this maps uh, to X zero, this maps to X zero, and this maps to X zero. Uh, but uh, what happens inside this triangle is that this each interval like this, it uh, uh, maps to a fixed point f one minus t. Yeah, this uh, this interval, a fixed interval for fixed value t is just mapped to f of one minus t. And, uh, uh, but of course, if I, uh, appro when T approaches uh, one, uh, this interval indeed uh, maps to X zero. But yeah, yeah, sorry, in between, this might be confusing, it was confusing, so in between, this interval is uh, just mapped to the whole point, but one, if I, when, I, when I move T, uh, and then uh, when I go, uh, the, the, uh, the value on this interval function is just given by uh, the value of f bar. So it goes here. So I go to restriction of this, uh, of, of, of my function big F on a generic uh, interval like this for generic value of t is, is, is a path which first follows f, follows f to some point to, uh, f1 minus t and then stays here for a while and then goes back along f bar. And, uh, but once I change my parameter t, this kind of the, 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 uh, the, this point where I stay, it, uh, it, it, it approaches x0. And finally, at the very end, I have just a pass which <laughs> stays the whole time at x0. Uh, does it uh, clarify things? Yes, yes, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, so essentially, we uh, uh, we are ready uh, to define what is a fundamental group, and we will essentially do this uh, the next time. Uh, just. Uh, uh, Well, let me just give you uh, just a, uh, a, a kind of a brief, brief announcement. Uh, so this will be a kind of an, uh, uh, so essentially the fundamental group. Well, I will I will tell it more carefully uh, in the next lecture. The fundamental group. Uh, of a topological space X with some fixed, with what is called base point, uh, base point X zero, so it depends, uh, so if you need to fix some uh, particular point X zero, is uh, defined as a, uh, as a space of all paths uh, which are maps from an interval X uh, such that the endpoints, both initial and terminal endpoints, they coincide with X0, so it's something like, the pass looks something like this, F, and uh, 
we quotient it with respect to a past commodity. Back to this equivalent relation. Uh, so this defines as a set, right? But in the group structure, If I take a, a, so if I need to define a group structure on the equivalence classes of paths, by equivalence classes, as usual, we denote by brackets. So if I take a equivalence pass, equivalence class of F and equivalence class of pass G, some, uh, some pass G, uh, then uh, I define the, the group structure so that the result is, uh, is equivalence class of composition of this to pass. I, come, I take first G and then I compose it with F. And uh, the fact uh, uh, that this is actually, everything is well defined uh, will follow from the proposition uh, that we just showed. But this is, will be, uh, yeah, this will be, I will return to this uh, next time. But uh, for today, that's it. But if you have any questions, uh, uh, let me know. No questions. Okay. Well, thanks then. Thank you.